Hi, we're going to drive around San Francisco in a Waymo. Let's check it out. Look, there's a Waymo vehicle right next to us. Maybe in the future, when we pass by each other, these Waymos could flash headlights and say hello to each other. Now, when we look at this, it's driving really slowly at about 25 miles per hour. I think FSD would be driving faster than this. Honestly, this is not a really challenging uh, traffic condition. There aren't many cars, pedestrians, or bikes. This SUV is also trying to take a left turn, so we drove forward a little bit. This is very good decision making. Look, this car is parked in front of us. We are trying to maneuver around it. Nicely done. The car made a very, very smooth move. Now, this is very interesting because normally when turning, we would take the inner lane, but it actually took the outer lane. Now, San Francisco is very different from China. It's not easy to drive with a lot of cars, but there aren't many bikes or pedestrians around or motorcycles. We're making a right turn and encountering some traffic. Important to note that um, we've been waiting. I think in San Francisco, other drivers are very polite and give way to us, which make me very happy. However, it makes driving less challenging. This is Friday evening. There's a lot of traffic in San Francisco. It's about 5 p.m. now. We expect to see even more traffic and more people. If we were in Beijing, Shanghai, or Guangzhou in China, the situation would be much worse. The most challenging part about driving in San Francisco is the slopes. There are a lot of steep inclines. If I were driving here, I would feel like the car might roll back going up the slopes. Now this truck in front of us has its emergency flashes on, but we managed to safely pass it at a comfortable speed. Now the traffic light just turned yellow. The slope here is really steep. In San Francisco, there are many steep slopes like this where it feels like you're driving up to the sky. I mean, it's challenging because you need to have a very good perception ability uh, as an autonomous driving car because you are looking forward and upward, covering a lot of ground. As a human driver, I can't see anything directly in front of me. So it feels like I'm driving uphill and I don't know what will come next. Honestly, I couldn't see what was around me until I got here. Oh my God. Now we're able to see. I wasn't able to see anything. Hey, we're ready to go. Unfortunately, someone's blocking the way. Crossing this intersection is quite complicated. There are traffic lights, pedestrians, and even pigeons to watch out for. Why are we waiting? Let's go. It feels very hesitant and reluctant. Finally, we're moving, and now we're pulling over. All right, I think we've reached our first destination. Now, it can be very challenging for uh, the robo-taxi to find a place to pull over once it reaches the destination. It's complicated. It's similar to our human brain's decision-making process, and it's not just about motion because it involves perception, prediction, planning, and control. The car obviously knows how to drive and stop, but it struggles to analyze the current situation or environment, where and when to pull over, so it asks for help. I think in the future, definitely we need a lot uh, more decision-making capability. Why is it stopping here? Why didn't it bypass the obstacle? Okay, now we're completely stuck. I think the cloud is going to intervene very, very quickly. Look, it's here. Our team is working to get you moving. 
Now you can see that if we rely solely on rules, it's not going to be enough. If we really want to have endless rules, we need to have endless data. And we have to use algorithm, use maybe a well-based, foundation-based, database ways to get around this. So one challenge we face in this context is that when we are dealing with autonomous vehicles, sometimes you just need to be connected to the cloud. I think we waited for about five seconds before someone took over. Otherwise, the vehicle just gets stuck without any other options. I believe that, I mean, obviously, I've been in autonomous driving um, exploration for many years. And among all the players, Waymo definitely is one of the top players. However, within autonomous driving capability itself, Waymo, when it comes to its capability, there's still a long way to go. Obviously, in areas like San Francisco, where the coverage is extensive, I mean, Waymo now is getting 90%. And I would feel very comfortable to rest in a car because it's driving very slow um, at about 25 miles per hour. But on the other hand, it doesn't feel like the smartest technology because it's not very efficient and it's quite slow. But it's slightly weaker than a human driver. I would say I'm slightly disappointed because it's been six months since I last tried it and I don't feel like there's been much progress. In this era of AI, there should have been more improvement. In the coming 12 to 18 months, its ability or capability may only improve by about 3% to 5%. I mean, this level of improvement in capability honestly, in my opinion, can easily be surpassed by autonomous car makers like ourselves. I believe that by 2025, with FSD and XNGP, we should be able to cover a lot more regions, and that would be really exciting. Here, I would like to highlight our Xpeng's AI Valet capability, especially our latest version. It allows you to have a uh, basically designated driver to drive you along your most common daily routes. Uh, for example, driving you to school, to work, get you around your daily routines. AI Valet driver basically combines the best of Xpeng's AI capability with your daily driving needs. It's a perfect match. And currently, we're focusing on covering, for example, the ETCP, the highway toll gates that connect highways and uh, city roads, and also towns and villages as well. I believe that when we achieve that, AI valet capability could potentially reach autonomous driving in a very, very mature stage, possibly by next year or even earlier. Six months ago, when I tried Waymo, I felt like it was very close to fully autonomous driving. Uh, however, when I look at AI-based development um, and model-based development, including FSD and its capability, I see that the progress has been significant. However, rule-based planning and control still feels less than satisfactory. And I feel like one of the biggest challenges facing Waymo is that you still need the cloud to support you. I noticed that the SR here, it really does not reflect the reality. For example, we have dogs and pigeons around. We only see road markings and cars on the screen. Look, it changed our navigation route. It did not make a U-turn. Are we already here? But it says 12 minutes to go. However, it was 7 minutes to go before it changed our route. I think maybe it was because it could not make a U-turn. We saw the ETA was uh, seven minutes, like a few minutes ago, mm -hmm. the, like it's uh, arriving in seven minutes, and now it says uh, 11 minutes. We don't know what's going on. Okay, well, I can see that the car actually had to um, make another route here at 3rd Street. Well, the customer service just called to confirm what's going on. Did she ask us about why we didn't turn? No, she asked what happened to the car and was just trying to comfort us. 
Hey everyone, we just spent an hour and a half in Waymo and now we've switched to Tesla's FSD. And I think Tesla is taking a completely different route because it says four minutes to go. Oh, it's because I added a stop in the middle uh, because we're trying to basically replicate the same uh, route as the one we took with Waymo. So we're trying to follow the same route as Waymo. Right. I think FSD is doing a good job, but again, the traffic condition is pretty easy to handle. Let's try downtown. The acceleration here by Tesla is obviously way better and more aggressive than Waymo's. I think FSD now took a different route through these narrow alleyways despite the double yellow line that indicates that we shouldn't have turned there. I think that decision was pretty perplexing. I mean, it could have taken a left turn in the main road and proceeded straight instead. I'm guessing that maybe because it's model-based training, which allowed Tesla to learn from some human driver's habits and shortcuts. Hey, look, it's struggling because the left lane is fully congested. We're struggling to cut into it. Probably I might have to take over because, look, on the left-hand side, cars are lining up to take a left turn. Wow, look, it is attempting to forcefully cut into the lane. Let's see if it's going to proceed or succeed. Well, last minute decision. Look, it's still hesitating. Should we cut? Should we not cut? We are on a go straight lane, but in the navigation, you can see that it's attempting to actually turn left. And we are signaling that as well. It really wants to turn left. Even though it's not supposed to. Many cars gave us the finger. My apologies. Tesla chose to turn left. Wow, that was pretty frowned upon, the decision made by Tesla. Well, that's why I think that in the future, autonomous driving cars definitely need to have some sort of signal or sign to let people or cars around it know that this car is driving itself, hoping others will understand or maybe bear with us. All right, now we have to pull over. We're not allowed to drive anymore or use the FSD anymore. Look. Now it's been disabled, meaning that for the coming seven days, we won't be able to activate this mode again because obviously we have violated the rules frequently and now we are banned. So with this FSD, you know, we tried the highways and Silicon Valley has been pretty good. But during our time in San Francisco, I believe that we drove for about 30 minutes. The experience was not as good as Waymo's. However, I think that as the amount of data used to train FSD gets larger and larger, the system becomes stronger and the infrastructure gets uh, better. I believe that by maybe the second half of this year or maybe next year, FSD, I believe, will surpass Waymo because AI will drive the development of uh, the realization of fully autonomous driving and maybe by 2026 we can have a car that completely drives itself in some scenarios and i'm definitely excited and looking forward to seeing more and more autonomous driving cars on the road joe how do you feel today well i think i uh, definitely prefer the ride in waymo but i agree with you in a sense that FSD gave me a lot of surprises, for example, it's been a smooth ride, even though it makes some bold and frown upon moves. It's nonetheless very adaptive and very flexible um, and, and, and creative in coming up with solutions. Sometimes, you know, I may not feel completely comfortable with his decisions, but most of the time it feels like it's a really skillful driver. Uh, he was able to take us to the destination and it was definitely very fun. Yes, I believe that XNGP with XPeng in China right now, you know, with so much training that we have going on and with very, very frequent and rapid OTA in the future will definitely surpass FSD in China uh, and their performance. Now, obviously, 
This experience with FSD taught me a lot, and we can learn a lot from Tesla as well. When we go back to China, I definitely want to apply some of what we learn, the customer experience, the、uh, functionality, the experience that we get from FSD, and incorporate those in XNGP. That's all for today. Thank you so much.